Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Next G1 HD FEV system from Autotech. Autotech is a company that specializes in HD transmission systems and the Next G1 was designed specially to target the racing drone market. At the moment of shooting this video the Next G1 is still not available so what I've got is an early sample and the final version should include some changes which I'm going to point out in this hands-on review. In this video I'm going to give you an overview of the Next G1 system and perform a latency test and soon I'm also going to post other videos which will include flight footage and side-by-side -side comparison videos. The Next G1 is based on two components. This is the receiver. On the top we can find four antennas. The big ones are used for receiving the signal from the VTX and the two smaller ones are Wi-Fi antennas. So when you power up the receiver it will create a Wi-Fi network and then through a dedicated app on your smartphone you can join the network and watch and record the received video. On the right side of the receiver we can find a DC in port which is going to be replaced with an XT60 female connector on the final version. The walk-in voltage is between 12 to 24 volts so you can power it up with lipo batteries between 3 to 6 cells. Then we can find an HDMI out port and a USB port that will enable you to charge your smartphone device and also update the firmware of the Next G1 receiver. Next to the USB port you can find a tripod thread and two more can be found on the bottom and also on the left side. Here you can also find the power button, four LED indicators, the left one is going to indicate that the receiver is working, the link is going to indicate that the VTX is connected, the HDMI is going to indicate that the HDMI port is being used and the mobile LED is going to indicate that a mobile device is connected. Over here we can also find two buttons. The bind button is going to enable you to bind a VTX to the receiver. So this system works a little bit different than the analog system that you currently know. As far as I know, we can connect a single VTX with a receiver, which means that if you want to use other VTXs, you will have to bind it each time that you want to use it. Next to the bind button, we can find the frequency switch. It will enable you to switch between seven available frequencies. And according to Autotech, four devices can use the same frequency simultaneously, so in total 28 devices can be connected simultaneously. Finally on the front of the receiver we can find four buttons that will enable you to show and hide the OSD information and also to change the settings of the VTX such as the output power and also the quality of the received video. Moving on to the VTX. On the VTX we can find two IPX connectors for the antennas. When you mount it on a quadcopter, you need to mount the antennas in the following manner. So one antenna should face the front of the quadcopter and the second one is going to face the back part of it. You can power up the receiver either by using this connector which is provided or you can simply use these pads on the bottom. So we've got the plus and minus pads and just like the receiver, you can use like a batteries between three to six cells in order to power it up. The VTX is based on two boards. You will be able to mount it on top of your stack using 30 by 30 mounting holes and from what I've been told, the final version is going to be actually smaller. The output strength of this VTX is fixed to 200 milliwatts. However, on the final version, you will have the option to switch between 200 and 25 milliwatts. On the left side of the VTX, you can find the bind button. The system already comes bound, but if you want to bind it to a different receiver, you will need to press this button for five seconds while pressing the bind button on the receiver for five seconds. And then the VTX is going to be bound to the new receiver. On the front side of the VTX, we can find the connector for the camera. And as you can see, this is not an ordinary connector. So only this camera can be used with this VTX. As I mentioned before, the final VTX is going to be a little bit smaller than this one. But anyway, the dimensions of this VTX are about 36.8 by 70.9 by 10.4 millimeters. It weighs 24.3 grams. And after adding the camera and also the two antennas, the total weight is 45.6 grams. The camera by itself, including its connector, weighs 12.5 grams. This is a full-size camera and actually 12.5 grams is not bad. The weight of the Foxeer Falco, for example, is 14 grams. Now I've got the whole system connected. After powering up the receiver, it will take about 15 seconds for it to load. The next G1 logo is going to appear on the screen and we can see the loading bar indication over here. In the meantime, I can connect the VTX. On the VTX itself, we can find a couple of LED indicators that are going to indicate that the VTX is working and also if it is connected to the receiver. Now the receiver is linking up with the VTX. 
the whole process is going to take about 15 seconds. And as you can see, now the video is working. On the OSD, you can find an indication about the signal strength, the quality of the picture. So after pressing the power button, you can switch to 480p low. So now you can see the image quality is not as good as it was before. You can also switch to 480p high. And I think that this changes the bitrate. And this is also going to affect the range. If the quality is going to be set to 480p H or low, the range that you should expect should be higher than when it's set to 720p. And according to AutoTech, the maximum range should be around 700 meters when it's set to 480p. And on one of my next videos, I'm going to test it out. Next, we can find the voltage indicators of the receiver and the transmitter. We can see the frequency that it's currently set to, the output strength of the VTX, and over here we can find the timer. After powering on the receiver, it will create a Wi-Fi network. Its name is NextG1, and the default password is 12345688. Then you can connect to it, and you will have to download a dedicated app, which is still not available in the App Store, but it will probably be available once this product is released. After opening up the app, you can see that we can see the same video that is displayed on the HDMI screen. However, the quality of this video is not as good as the HDMI and you should not use this screen for flying the quadcopter. The signal is not as reliable and also the latency is not as good as the HDMI screen. In addition, if you're not going to connect an HDMI screen to the receiver, the system won't allow you to connect the mobile app. So first you will need to connect the HDMI monitor and only after that you will be able to connect to the receiver for the dedicated app. The main purpose of the app is to record the captured video. So after tapping the screen, you can see the record button. Now the video is recording. And after pressing stop, the video is going to be saved to a smartphone device. The next thing I've done is to test the latency of the system. In order to do it, I record the screen at 240 frames per second, and then I turn off the light in my room. You can see that in this part, the room is completely dark, but we can still see some light on the screen because of the latency. It took about 12 frames for the screen to go completely dark, and each frame is about 4 milliseconds, so the total latency of the system is about 50 milliseconds. And you have to take into consideration that each screen has also different latencies, especially when using the HDMI connector, so the latency might be higher or even lower on the system that you're going to use this device with. Even though it's a little bit more complicated, I will try to repeat the same process using my Fetcher goggles and I will keep you updated about the results. Finally, in terms of pricing, the next G1 system is going to be sold for around $300, so this is definitely not a cheap system and not everybody will be able to afford it. The VTX and the camera are going to be sold separately for around $120 and hopefully they'll be able to get the prices down if they will be able to sell enough units. So this is going to be the end of my overview of the next G1 system and soon I'm going to post more videos about it so stay tuned. As always I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. If you have any questions about the next G1 system feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.